close there. All right, guys. So this is going to be my review of my made in China, uh, bought on Amazon, cheapo tire mounter, dismounter, and balancer. That was a little bit of a mouthful. So I've had this stuff for a little over a year now, and I've definitely put a good handful of tires through here. I've done some balancing. I've done all kinds of dismounting. I've put uh, winter tires on, took the winter tires back off, uh, rebalanced obviously every time. We got autocross tires for one of our cars. So on the last video I did on these, I kind of just did a unboxing and first impressions type of thing. I didn't actually have wheel weights or anything yet to play with it yet. I'm gonna go through a set of tires today and let you guys see how this stuff works. Make sure you stick around to the end because I'll show what I think about it and some just little like kind of quirks and stuff that are good and bad and what you can and can't live without. So question one right off the bat, how much air do you need to run this bad boy? Well, I am, for this video, I'm going to be running off my little bit bigger garage air compressor, just so you guys don't hear the noise. But I have this little portable, like, contractor nail gun compressor, um, and this will actually run this machine. Now, just barely, but it will basically run pretty much, if you touch anything on it, it'll just instantly have to recuperate. But that little compressor had no use for me right now and it's just uh, was already chilling in the shed here so that is what i usually use to do this so i don't have to mess with doing that and it does work if you're using the bead blaster that uses a lot of air and you just have to wait for it to regenerate but you can run this with a smaller compressor maybe a bigger one than that that's like bare minimum and that one does have like a pretty big motor on it because it's made to recuperate really fast it's not quite like your cheap harbor freight one that's like that size but you can run this off a smaller compressed compressed compressor no problem all right so that's enough of all of that we need some tires to play with so irene's daily uh tahoe is looking like a pretty good candidate we got this with these tires on it and these don't look too bad but these back ones, there's not a lot of tread going on there. So I gotta get these off and then I got some replacements for them. So piled up over here with all my scrap that I really need to work on getting rid of. Um, we got, they're used. I got these for a pretty sweet deal from a friend that he just basically didn't need these. And these got a lot more beefy tread on them. Um, looks a little bit more deserving of a truck. Um, never mind the spare. That's actually a spare for that that I got because it didn't have a spare either. These look like garbage because they've been sitting out here in the rain. So I'm going to get them cleaned up and then we're going to get in the shed and get to work. Alrighty, so I got my victim here. Uh, this is actually one of the back tires. I already ran through the two front tires just so I could kind of get in the rhythm of using this because uh, it's actually been just a few minutes since I've played around with this. I've been really preoccupied with the V8 um, S10 project over there. So, by the way, if you didn't know, I'm also doing engine swaps. That's kind of what my channel is actually about. If any of that sounds interesting to you, check the description below. I'll have some links for some other videos and a bunch of other good stuff. There's something for you down there uh, when you're done watching the video. First things first, we got to get the air out of this thing. get that in there make sure I'm not pressing right where the valve stem is uh, it doesn't really matter for these but if you have tire pressure sensors you don't want to risk going in there and immediately busting that thing off
one more should do it. There we go. Get these old wheel weights off. on the table she goes so same deal here I want to make a habit of putting your tire stem um, oh I actually have to lock it in there we go okay you want to get this to where it's just barely hovering off the wheel um, up and down and side to side because when you pry on this it's going to pull it in just a little bit and you're trying not to dig the heck out of it um, not that these rims are that nice so always put the valve stem under the duct bill um, taking it off and then we're going to do the opposite putting it on it's just a good habit to have because those tire sensors are expensive to replace came right off. Now we're going to rotate it around just so that tire stem is back over there again. And just like that she's off. It came with this bar which is actually a pretty nice bar. It also came with those little clippers that I took the uh, wheel weights off with which I'm still using they're cheap but they work all right I'm gonna show you my patented never leak rim trick here let's take this bad boy it's got real nasty under that wheel weight but just wipe this thing down you can tell it's been wire brushed and it had that goop put in there I really don't like that goop stuff um, it just it just makes a mess and when it comes time to take the tire off it can really make it hard to get that tire back off clean the beads on this and the tire and just literally just wipe it off 90% of your leaks you just basically won't have so unless it's really really bad you won't have to use that goop or maybe just have to use it in like a tiny spot um, it sounds so stupid, but like 90% of guys are too lazy or too much in a hurry to just wipe that rim real quick. I mean, it's any little piece of crap that gets in there can let air leak past it. Big boy. So just trying to blow off that last little bit of uh grass and water and random stuff that got in there so not to make a reoccurring theme but uh cleanliness is everything so it's time to get this bad boy on here step one now that we got everything cleaned up is we got to lube this bead so to help it uh pop on there properly so our machine conveniently came with this stuff that i still have um, it seems to just kind of last forever. All right, yeah, check out that goofy little brush it came with. All right, so the wife said that she wants the white walls out. Uh, usually you just put whatever side, if it's directional, it has to go obviously a certain direction. If not, you just put the date code outwards. The date code should always be outwards. Um, in our case, we're doing the white wall, white lettering, whatever. And I think the date code's actually on this side anyhow. So we're going to throw this on. Now, these are pretty stiff from doing the first two. I can tell you, usually you can just throw the bottom and pop it on. These guys are a little bit um, not going to work with me this little. 
Okay, so first off, our valve stem is on the opposite side of our duck head now. Okay, there's the first one. Valve stem is back over there. Going to get this popped on here just right. Swing that out of the way. Just gotta put some air in it. Check out this cool little thing. This actually came with the machine. So we're technically done with this tire. I did just wanna show you guys because um, I don't think these are really going to be difficult enough to where I have to use this stuff. But I have had to use it in the past. So, what's going on here? Okay, that comes over, it pops in. Now, the first tire I did, I had to use this. Because um, the bead is so stiff, I had a hard time getting it to flex down all the way. This would come down. And there's air in here, so it's not going to really push. But this is locked. This this one won't move. And then this one you can kind of guide to help shove that bead down and really get it on there all the way. And it just gives you that like pneumatic just pressure that you can't just do with your hands. to do that so hard on to the balancing all right i already got this set up for this tire uh, wheel I'll put that in there i'll put this this has a like this lock thing so you can kind of skip the threads all right so i already have this machine set up for the rim size and the tire size and all that um, I'll run through it real quick just so you can see how it would work. You have this little tape measure thingy. You pull that out, you touch the side of the rim. It would be nine inches, which is what I have in there. Um, on a more professional machine, you might have some kind of laser or something that might measure that, or you would just pull that out and it would automatically just enter that in the machine. Um, Next, we need our width. You got this uh, crazy caliber thing, cali caliper. Probably the most like low tech um, of all of this. But it does work out so you can figure out how wide the rim is. We put it on there, we look at this side, it says seven and a half. That's what I have entered in there. And you can also use it to see how big of a rim it is. But uh, if you want a little cheat code, you can look right at the side of the tire and that'll tell you what size rim it is. With a, a spin to get her moving, we hit the start button. Um, when you turn this machine on, it automatically goes to dynamic, which is just a clip on weight on either side. So it measures this way and this way, where static is only just like up and down, if that makes sense. Okay, so this one's actually off by quite a bit. It wants two and a half on this side and then a quarter on this side. Let me make sure this is on here all the way. That is so another little pro tip if you get a measurement that's like way way out there um this isn't that bad i mean these are old crusty wheels and used tires but you might have been unlucky and if you're like me you're probably unlucky more than you're lucky um dismount the tire don't take it off but just pop the beads and try rotating that sucker 180 degrees because you might have just 
by chance lined up like the heavy side of the rim with the heavy side of the tire. So I'm gonna give it a try just because I got nothing better to do and I kind of want to prove a point. I'm gonna just give it a stab and see what happens. It's probably worth mentioning I have not um, recalibrated this. This has been pretty well calibrated right out of the box and this thing's been through some pretty severe I'm gonna say severe conditions. I came out here and it's just in a shed. There's not really heat out here. And this stuff was just totally covered in frost. So, and then obviously it gets really hot out here too because there's not AC. Uh, anyhow, let's see. Show me the money. Let's see what we got. It's either gonna be better or worse. Ooh, <laughs> it got worse. I should have probably just left it alone. Oh man. Yeah, now we're up to 4.75 on the outside. So I'm gonna pretty much just put it right back where it was. And then we're gonna go from there. Did end up a slightly different. Now it's calling for zero on the back side and 275 on the outside. So that's just the way it's going to be. So I just have to get this rotated. When all the bars light up. Okay, 275 right there on the top. Okay, so I'm going to split the difference on this. I got a one and a half and then a 1.25. So that would give me two, 250 and 275 so that's the best way to do it if you don't just have one big weight for the size that you need found it easier i got one of these little cheapo hammers you get at like the dollar store um it works better than using one of these things i don't use these to hammer at all um, even the nicer pairs and it has the little rubber butt in for knocking center caps out zero on the back so we're just going to give it a spin and see what happens all righty we got her to zero uh this one got kind of crazy because clearly there was something wrong with this tire uh, so it took three sessions i was worried i was going to go into like an infinite loop of just adding 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 um because you can get in a situation if you're not careful um even the more high quality balancers some they're just not absolutely perfect uh and you can get to where you start counterbalancing like maybe the machine will call for a little bit more weight or um these weights might not be built to perfect spec either to where they they're more or less that's probably what it is now that i think about it but here end up having a weight here and then you add one there and then you add one here and you're just this you just go around and around and around with weights uh so we got a couple there we got some stuff going on there i might do this again i don't like that at all actually uh the other ones did not do this that one's all on the same side at least so i'm flashing in from the future real quick i ended up doing a static balance because this thing just kept annoying me um and i ended up with just that chunk of weight right there and it's down to a quarter so i'm just going to see how that uh rolls out and if it makes a vibration luckily this is going on the back anyways if it makes some kind of weird vibration then we'll see what happens from there so as far as pros and cons um these things they're pretty legit man they do the job you can't touch this kind of stuff name brand wise for this price point is you just can't um i you can get these with different attachments i got this style i think it works great there's different arm attachments you can get and ones that i'm less familiar with but this is like the mid-grade one there's one that has a way more stuff hanging off of it um, and then even this thing would be like air controlled instead of the lever, but it works just fine for what it is. So, um, 
This thing is a little wonky. I really like the ones that have the controls where you can move this in and out, like right here, um, or maybe on a pedal there. This one, you pull it out and it pulls in, but then um, it's a little weird, but it works. The table is pretty legit. These pedals are plastic. Um, these ones have metal under them. These ones on the end are just kind of floppy plastic. As far as the arms and everything goes, it's pretty legit. Um, not much of a complaint besides for those couple things. I didn't get to show you the air blaster. This is the air blaster. This thing is a weapon, man. Uh, a lot of tables they have little air holes here and they're basically inject air into it'd be like the back of the bead to help you seat the tire um, that one is kind of like the portable air style but it is attached to the machine i have used it and it does work you just you just got to hang on to that sucker because that is a a lot of volume coming out of there all at once uh the balancer Obviously, it's pretty low tech. I mean, you got like a measuring tape and the dial thing. Uh, it does work. It takes a little longer to operate than like a more fancy machine that does the measurements and just has a couple little things to it. But the price point, it still just comes back to that price point. So uh, I think for what they are, they're pretty sweet. And they've been through some pretty severe conditions and they still seem to work all right. That was not the best example of it, but the other tires I've done, besides for the ones that you know it's like a crappy tire, kind of like this situation, it does really well and it will zero out in maybe just one to two turns. So yeah, I think it's pretty sweet. I'll have a link for this whole setup in the description below. I think that's all I got for now. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you in the next one.